Hello, TSSG family. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us on that SundaySchoolGirl.com channel. Welcome to this channel and thank you for joining us in this week's Sunday School Review with our lead teacher, Evangelist Waynell Henson. Again, I am Jameson Travick and I will be presenting this fourth Sunday Sunday School lesson. Please get your devices, get your Bibles, and get your paper ready as we prepare to jump into this dynamic lesson for this week. In addition, please make sure to hit that thumbs up like button and the subscribe button if you have not already done so. Today, we will take a look at Faith of a Canaanite pulled out of Matthew chapter 15 verses 21 through 28, which is for Sunday, April 28th, 2024. Our background and printed scripture texts are from Matthew chapter 15, again, verses 21 through 28. The title of this week's lesson is Faith of a Canaanite, Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, O God, for this day, and we thank you for the word that you have blessed us with, O God. We pray that you will bless our minds to be open to receive your word, O God. Bless us with understanding in the name of Jesus. Bless us to not just be hearers, but active doers of your word, O God. Bless us that your word will abide in us, O God, and we will abide in your word, O God. Increase our faith, O God. Please continue to pour out from an open window in heaven, O God. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Bless all that join in with us in the study of this lesson. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Hello to every one of you. Hello, TSSG family. Hello, TSSG family. You're in the TSSG space. Well, hello, TSSG family. Sunday, 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 Sunday school. Changing the way you see Sunday school with that Sunday school. Today, we're looking at the fourth lesson in Unit 2, The Measure of Faith. Our lesson aims from our NIV Standard Commentary are one, summarize the interaction between Jesus and the Canaanite woman, two, explain Jesus' response in verse 24, and three, brainstorm situations where a parent should and should not intervene on behalf of a child. Our key verse or verse of concern reads, Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Matthew uh, 15, verse 28 from the NIV or New International Version translation, NIV translation. We have two outlines for today's study. The first is first request, Matthew 15, 20, uh, verses 21 through 24. The second is second request, Matthew 15, uh, verses 25 through 28. As a brief history and layout of the book of Matthew, um, when we look at the book of Matthew, we find that it is listed as one of the four Gospels uh, between Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and specifically a part of one of the what we call the synoptic Gospels. Matthew is a former tax collector who became a follower of Jesus and thought to have penned most, if not all, the book of Matthew. Now, Matthew's main audience seems to be the Jewish people. Matthew's book uh, tells the story of Jesus focusing on his on his life, his teachings and death and resurrection. It's like a mix a mix of biography and religious teaching all put together in one unit. It, it's meant to show that Jesus is the long-awaited Messiah uh, that the Jewish people had been expecting. As far as key things from the book of Matthew, there are five that I was looking at specifically. One is the kingdom of heaven. Two is the fulfillment of prophecy. Three is following Jesus. Four is Jesus' power. And fifth is the inclusion of everyone, Jews and Gentiles. Uh, lastly, the book of Matthew is like a detailed picture of Jesus showing him as the promised Savior that is a teacher of good living and someone with authority and power all coming from God. In this second unit for the quarter, the measure of faith, a second aspect of faith in Scripture is presented, which involves believing in Christ and placing trust in God. 
One of the ways faith becomes evident is through the choices and conduct of individuals. The Gospels offer numerous instances where people exhibit faith through their actions. For instance, there are men who bring their paralyzed friend to Jesus, believing that he can heal them. And that was in our the lesson six, coming from Luke chapter five. Similarly, a Roman centurion displays faith by requesting Jesus to heal his servant from afar, which was lesson seven. Now, another example is a woman who demonstrates her faith by trusting that Jesus can forgive sins, the woman with the alabaster box. Today, we study how a non-Jewish uh, Gentile woman exhibits faith by believing that Jesus can cure her daughter coming from Matthew chapter 15. Now, leading up to Matthew 15 and verse 21, um, as part of our introduction, Jesus has been teaching and performing miracles throughout the, the region of Galilee. He heals many people, including the sick, uh, demon-possessed, the paralyzed. However, he also faces opposition from religious leaders. These people criticize him for breaking their traditions and challenging their authority, breaking traditions and challenging their authority. Now, Matthew 14, we see Jesus feeding the 5,000 with just five loaves of bread and two fish, walking on water and healing many who were sick. This displays his miraculous power and, and his compassion for the crowds of people. Following this, in Matthew 15, verses 1 through 20, Jesus confronts the Pharisees and teachers of the law who criticize his disciples for not following their religious customs. Jesus emphasizes that, that it's not external rituals that defile a person, but what comes from the heart. Again, it's not the external rituals that defile a person, but it's what comes from within the heart, comes from the heart. Now, by the time uh, we reach Matthew uh, chapter 15 and verse 21, Jesus leaves Galilee and travels to the region of Tyre and Sidon, which are Gentile territories. This journey makes a significant shift in Jesus's ministry as he encounters a Canaanite woman, this woman who approaches him seeking healing for her demon-possessed daughter. This encounter highlights Jesus's willingness to extend his ministry beyond the Jewish community, thus demonstrating his compassion and the universality uh, of his message, that it's for everybody. Looking at our first outline, um, first request, Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 24, and I'll read it through from the NIV translation. <clears throat> the faith of a Canaanite woman, verse 21, leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Now, when we examine these verses and just, just taking a look at them, just one at the time, when, when Jesus went to Tyre and Sidon, um, these are places we need to identify as we're teaching this lesson. That these are places where non-Jewish people reside, people uh, that, that would be considered, considered Gentiles. And while in this place, and for, for one, it may be um, uh, thought, at least from a lot of Jewish people, why would he go to Tyre or Sidon, which is where non-Jewish people are? But there is a reason. But while he is there, a woman from the place who wasn't a Jew, in other words, she's a Gentile, and they're going to describe her as a Canaanite woman, comes to him and asks him with a determination to heal her daughter. 
Now, first of all, looking at verses 21 and 22, let, let's break down the fact that the woman is a Gentile. They describe her as a Canaanite woman from the region. So he is in a place, and it just so happens that this gift of God ends up in a place where there is someone with a need in the same region of vicinity. However, again, she's not Jewish. She is Canaanite, and then thought to be uh, the Canaanites were people that 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 were thought of as enemies against the children of Israel, against the Jewish nation, and that had been historically so. No, nothing new. It was something that had been going on even back in the Old Testament. So you have you have people that are there that are watching what's going on. You have Jewish people that are there uh, along with his disciples, but you have this. The region being mostly Gentile, we're looking at uh, what happens between these people. Now, the woman that comes is not coming. Look at it. She's not coming on her behalf, but she's coming interceding for her daughter. And this is something to consider. It's, it's, it's worthy of our consideration because in um, this the, the unit that we're looking at, uh, that we've been looking at, we're looking, we, we can take take a look back from the first Sunday, from Lesson 6, where, where, where you have someone that's coming on behalf of someone else. You, you just think back on, on, on how the, the friends, the four friends, bring their paralyzed friend to Jesus. He couldn't bring himself, but they have a determination and they have a spirit of, for, for one, the faith that Jesus can heal. And we're going to get our friend to Jesus. That was in Lesson 6 from the first Sunday. We're, we're looking at this same type. Look at it from from lesson seven, there was a centurion that that had the faith that if, if he could get to Jesus, uh, understanding authority, that 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 if Jesus would just speak a word, that his servant would would be healed. Now, we'll, and, and then look at lesson eight. Lesson eight last week that was taught to us so eloquently was about the woman with the alabaster jar that that also comes to Jesus. These are people that 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 society has deemed or let's say the religious order has deemed that are not necessarily worthy, but all of them come and they come to Jesus with a great faith, with a great faith. And in several of the lessons, we see that they come on behalf of someone else. They come so that someone else can be made whole or made better. Also, Look at how this woman approaches the Messiah. This is very important when we're looking um, at through this lesson and teaching this lesson. Uh, verse 22, a Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, let's, let's just looking at that part right there. Her approach to the Messiah, even though she is not a Jew, she addresses Jesus by honoring him, one as Lord and as the son of David. Now, think about it. Do we still remember to show honor in what we say and do? Do we remember uh, how to show honor when we approach God with our request? Many times. <clears throat> um, and we should give honor where honor is due. And I think about um, now a lot of people want to question, you know, do we need to follow protocol? Is it worthy of doing that? And I'm going to say yes. A lot of people want to withdraw from the idea that there should be honor and protocol said they're, they're the same level as I am. And they want to say that everybody's on the same plane. But listen, when you need to make a request to the Savior, when you need to make a request of someone that you already have faith that can grant your request, you need to make sure that you approach Approach them in an humble state. You can approach boldly, but you need to also approach giving honor where honor is due. Approach with 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 with, with your request, yes, but also remember that there can be a set of protocol that you need to make sure that you don't step out of whatever that may be for this for the idea of offending them. I think about the centurion. He made sure that he tried to look at the situation just as this woman is doing. She's looking and. and 
and she's looking at the lay of the land, understanding protocol, understanding honor, and she approaches Jesus with an humbleness in her honor, addressing him as Lord and as the son of David. But when you also, and then, then she makes her request known. She, she lets Jesus know, not that he answers immediately, but she lets him know. When we look further at this particular um, outline, the disciples or the leaders who are with Jesus, they, they don't like the idea that she is bothering Jesus or bothering them. And they want Jesus to make her leave. That that caused me to pause because th this lesson is so rich and the idea that that these are the disciples of Jesus and I know that they are learning. So so I, I'm I'm gonna put that in my bag of thinking that they are learning um learning to be disciples, but just the thought that here we are with the Savior, here we are with the healer, here we are with the deliverer. We know the power that he has, we know what he can do, and here is someone that is coming. They're not a Jew, they are a Gentile, they are Canaanite, they are uh, considered enemies to the 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 the, the Israelites or the Jewish people. But they feel bothered by her making a request and making it before them and before the one that obviously the only one who can grant the request during the time period. Now, we see that Jesus does not respond to her. And, and for that, that seems odd to us. But during that time period, and this is a lesson that I had to take the time to go back and look at the perspective of what was understood within the context of the day. So during that time period, it's, it's not uncommon for people not to address men and women whom they do not know or if they consider themselves as strangers. You know, you're a stranger to me. I don't know you. So it's, it was wasn't uncommon for them not to address the individuals. And when you think about even society today, depending on where you are, I live in the South and it's very common for people to speak even to strangers, but that may not be the case everywhere that you just speak to everyone that you come in contact with. Where, where, where we're raised and the way that the culture is um, where in, in my community and neighborhood, when you walk into a room, you're, you're to, in honorableness, you're to address everyone. You're, you're to say good morning, good evening, but you're to address everyone. Just because they're a stranger, you do not address them. But in that culture, in that day and time, that, that was not the case. So we have to remember as teaching this lesson, when Jesus does not necessarily answer her right Right off, that does not mean that the rules of our day and in our culture apply. No, in that day and time, it wasn't uncommon. But now we do ask ourselves, and your students may ask, why did Jesus take this posture of not addressing the woman? Because um, this is not his response in every circumstance. For example, does he respond the same to everybody in every circumstances, or, or is it specific to the need uh, that's in that instance or circumstance? And, and that's one of the things that, that we have to find out or discover. Uh, even with our students, that Jesus' response is not necessarily the same every time with everybody in every circumstance. Each one is different and each one's unique. But there are things that can be pulled out for the sake of those that are the witnesses to the event. Um, there could have been a deeper lesson that needs to be learned by the people that are witnessing this exchange between Jesus and the Canaanite woman. Uh, between the, These witnesses are Jews as well as Gentiles. There is something from their frame of reference based on the foundations that have been laid in by culture and the time period that they need to learn that they would understand. When we go further... Just think about Jesus possibly, very possibly, could have discerned that this woman possessed the readiness, the readiness. It was, the time was at hand, the readiness to confront a situation with courage 
and uh, to actively seek his compassion. That That's important. The readiness, the time is now ready where she is strong enough. She has the faith. She has a determination, a courage to actively seek. Ah, actively is different than passive. Actively seek, put into action. Uh, seeking his compassion. And that may be something that the, the entire group needed to be a witness of as a testimony where where they where they are or they may not be, because people will say that I have the faith. Um, I'm willing to seek um Jesus's compassion, but but they don't put it into action. This allows them to witness, be a witness, to be um uh, the bystanders to see a Gentile, not a Jew. I have to keep saying that someone that has not necessarily been trained in the scripture, but this person has an active faith. And and, and you remember with the centurion who was not a Jew, but his faith was greater than those that were around him. This lady's faith is coming up to show to be stronger than those that are already there. Again, this is something that this group may need to be a witness of because it's going to expand into showing the purpose of Christ's mercy. And and, and later in this lesson, the mercy can also be, be, be a metaphor for the bread, for the bread, for the bread that Jesus is going to describe in a few minutes. Um, but his mercy, uh, first for the, 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 the Jews and, and then for the Gentiles, but in essence for everybody, for everybody. Jesus says to her that he was sent to help or be a blessing when he does speak. Um, he lets her know that he was sent to be a blessing or a help to the people of Israel who who, who were lost, not to the Gentiles. And in, in the way that it's worded, he answered. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Um, Despite Jesus remaining silent in the beginning, the woman is persistent in her request for help. Now, that persistency lets us know uh, yes, she had a determination, yes, and we've spoken of that before with the four friends in, in a few lessons back. But I also want you to consider this consistency and determination in making her request unto him because she knows that he can 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 fulfill the request. She knows, you know, it's different when you go to the bank or you go to ask for something and, and, and they don't answer and you walk off. No, this, this lady had a determination and, and, and she was determined to intercede for her child, for her daughter. And, and, and even though Jesus didn't answer at first, she kept making her requests and she kept crying out to him. She was persistent, even if it seemed that Jesus was dismissing her. Then Jesus does make a statement to her as if to say, I'm just dropping this in your lap. What you do with it is up to you. Jesus draws on the imagery of a shepherd and and, and, and which is which is most familiar, very familiar, very familiar in Old Testament writing, something that the people who are listening will understand and and, 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 and be fairly clear on. It is something that was within their grasp and understanding. And he states that his mission is directed specifically towards the lost sheep of Israel. He, he doesn't say that he came for the Gentiles in this statement. He just says that he comes for the lost sheep of Israel. And you can imagine for the people that, that are there that already look at this lady with disdain. Think about the, the, the disciples um, that want to dismiss, have Jesus to dismiss her. Um, that the people are standing there and they're hearing this, they are probably thinking to themselves, you go, Jesus, tell her that's right. You're only for the lost sheep of Israel. But sometimes people want to cheer on, but, but, but they, you have to draw them in so that you can reveal to them a truth, a truth of, of who they are and what the real work is all about. That's very, very important that we explain in today's lesson. Now looking at the second outline, and in this second outline, 
Um, it's it's entitled Second Request, Matthew 15, verses 25 through 28. But again, reading these from the, the NIV translation, starting with verse 25, the woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yet it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Again, uh, family, this is a powerful lesson, in my opinion. This is something that in, in our short time together, I encourage you to dig into this even deeper. This woman continues to plead her case to Jesus. What is her case? That he would heal her daughter. Now, um, she even comes to him, let me go ahead and say kneeling before him and calling him Lord. She maintains the respect that she has for him and in what he can do. She, she, she draws closer to him to make her request known to him that she requests that her daughter be healed, interceding for her daughter, kneeling before him, showing humbleness and showing his authority, and then again calling him Lord, showing protocol. This lady did not, she did not become, uh, um, uh, Disgruntled, she didn't become angry, she didn't become discouraged. She she had a made up mind and she went in with the resolve to approach Jesus directly uh, rather than continue to make her request from a distance. In other words, she drew even closer to him to make her request known. She she didn't draw back, she didn't just say forget about it. And, and, and I say that because even in today's microwave society, we have to know that we have to have a persistence, even in in the house of God, when we present the word to people and they don't seem to take it, we have to continue to maintain in prayer and live the life before our children, before our community, that God is still sitting on the throne and that by being in the household of faith, that, that we now have a right unto the tree of life and not that we don't have troubles, but now we have somebody that we can take our troubles to. This, this woman, yeah, this woman is a prime example. She's got a problem, but she has somebody that she has recognized and has faith in that she can take her problems to. Look at how she approaches Jesus. There, there, is, there is value in approaching with reverence, uh, re with respect. She didn't approach him with anger. No, she came with reverence. She came kneeling before him. She approached him and presented her request. Look at it. She says, Lord, help me. That acknowledges his authority, honoring his position and power. What she believes that, and she knows that he is able to do she continues to press forward because she has this strong faith that Jesus is able to do it. And she continuously makes her request known unto him. Now, when Jesus mentions in, in, in verses 26 and 27 that the food was meant for the children and not the dogs, she replies saying that even dogs get crumbs from the master's table. Now, when you first look at this, it, you, you recognize that Jesus denies her request using a metaphor for which highlights the, the, the issue that the people that are the bystanders because and evidently the people can hear because this has been recorded. So someone had to be able to hear, several had to be able to hear the, 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 the noticing the Gentile heritage that was prevalent during the day and, and how Jesus brings this out for the people's betterment and understanding. He likens God's mercy comparing it to bread and explains that it wasn't proper to give what belonged to the children of Israel to the dogs. In studying that, because in our present day society, uh, referring to someone as a dog is not necessarily positive, I want to make sure that there was a clear understanding. So I put a note from the NET Bible that, that, that does uh, a pretty good job of, of explaining 
uh, what Jesus, what this reference is is about, this term, and 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 in calling or referencing dog, this 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 is more of looking at a master and the 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 house pets, the 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 dogs that are in the house that the master has chosen. Now let, let let's break that down because the people of the day thought of gentiles the the pharisees the the a lot of the people that are jews thought of the gentiles as being street dogs that have to go around and scavenge for food but the term that jesus is using here is not a a, a dog that has been thrown away not it's not a mangy dog it's not a sooner one thing is another dog no what, what he is describing are, are these precious animals that a master has chosen um, that someone and you all know my sons are dog lovers I can't say that I am a big dog lover but they 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 believed in, in taking care of their dogs and they had to buy high quality dog food and 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 all this kind of stuff my parents um, when all of us were became grown and moved out, they got a house dog, and 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 that almost broke them because they wanted to make sure their dog had food, and the food had to be cooked, and it had to be warmed, and they didn't want the dog to eat dog food because in their minds, you know, that's do you eat dog food? I remember telling my parents, I'm not a dog. They can eat puppy chow and and and, and purina, but no, they wanted to go and and buy all this real food for the dog and cook it just like the dog had to have steak and things like that. Jesus's term was much more of that of 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 using the term dog. However, the the Jewish people looked at it as some mangy scavenger dog, but he was using it as um uh, a, a lap dog, one that was chosen, that was cherished within the house. And in that thought, I want you to think about this, it not being a derogatory term, but um, it's one to indicate privileged position. Uh, Jesus is using this in order to, again, to draw them in. And, and, and also it's showing the woman's uh, perspective, her, her receptiveness, and her response. Her response. Um, this lady does not, she does not respond angrily to him. Take a note of that. But she responds with faith and continues with the metaphor. Continues with the metaphor. Because of her faith, because of her faith, her daughter in verse 28 is instantly, immediately healed or, or cured. This mother demonstrates a very keen understanding. I'm going to go back to the word determination and has a quick response still within um, respect for Jesus, who she knows can grant it using the same analogy. Uh, 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 of dogs at the dinner table, she points out that even the house dogs, the pets, they even get the scraps from the master's table. And that's a sermon all in itself because... Listen, if you didn't get the cornbread and all you got was the crumb, what was in the whole loaf is also in the crumb. And I think about that because the lady wasn't asking for the whole family to be healed. She just needed a piece. And But she felt that that piece that she could get was enough that... Like the woman touching the hem of Jesus' garment, if she could just get a little bit, it would be enough to take care of the whole thing. There was enough in the crumb, in the touch, in the peace that, that it would satisfy everything that was needed. Even if Jesus deemed her uh, as a lowly house dog, she still has a willingness to acknowledge him as the master of the house. Yeah, he even though he says that she she has this this mindset that Jesus is still the master uh that she still will get the blessings that fall from the master when we're looking at mercy and bread she's seeking mercy if she gets a little bit of mercy it's still mercy 
a little bit of bread, the crumb is still the bread. The Canaanite woman shows an unwavering trust and faith in God's benevolence. And her argument wasn't grounded just in what she believed she deserved, but on her confidence, that is her faith in God's ability to provide for what she needed. She had faith that Jesus transcends limitations and that his mercy his mercy is boundless, regardless of who she is, her status, if she is a Jew, if she's not, if she's male, if she's female, her cultural background. She still believes and has faith that Jesus' mercy, the bread, is boundless. It, it does not sit in any box. The mindset of the Jews prior to this, and I'm challenging us on this one. That God's mercy is for those that are in the house as well as those that are outside of the house. Let me explain that because uh, many times uh, we have to remember uh, ourselves that those that are in the household of faith, that we see the study of the word every day, that, that Jesus died, that his mercy is for the Jew and the Gentile, is for everybody, the saint and the sinner. And then we have to express this mercy, this grace, and this love to everybody, not just those that we see every day, even to the stranger, we need to show mercy. When people don't understand, they show mercy. When when they should understand, they should know better, still show mercy. We still should have a grace for our fellow man. The words of this woman clearly articulate um, Jesus to, to Jesus, the faith, the, the greatness, the, the depth of her faith and the fact that her faith, she puts it into action, into action. Jesus's response is to grant her request and he grants it immediately on points that we can look at for this lesson. Um, one point is persistence in faith. Look at her determination. Look at how persistent she is. This Canaanite woman approaches Jesus persistently seeking healing for her demon-possessed daughter. Despite Jesus's initial silence, despite the discouragement from the disciples, she still continues to plead with Jesus, demonstrating an unwavering faith in his ability to help. Remember that persistence in faith. And whatever you're asking God for, have a persistent attitude about it. A second is recognition of Jesus's authority. When Jesus initially refers to his mission being primarily for the lost sheep of Israel, the woman acknowledges his authority by kneeling before him, addressing him as Lord, and then she accepts this metaphorical depiction of her as a lapdog in comparison to the children of Israel, but, but cleverly. She argues that even the the, the lap dogs in the house receive the crumbs that fall, not just from the table, but she has in there the master's table, showing her acceptance again of his authority, recognizing the position and the authority of Jesus. The third is commendation of great faith. The first, persistence in faith. The second, recognition of Jesus' authority. But this third, commendation of great faith. Jesus praised the woman for her remarkable faith. Remember how Jesus Jesus spoke to the man that was lowered down and, and, and forgave him of his sins and spoke of the faith of the, of, of the friends. The, the centurion, the centurion had great faith, more so than the people that were there that, that should have believed in Jesus. Uh, this lady, this lady, her remarkable faith affirms that her request would be granted despite her Gentile background. Her courageous faith in Jesus' limitless mercy led to the the immediate healing of her daughter, illustrating the inclusive, the inclusiveness of God's mercy for anybody that approach him in faith. That is, again, persistence in faith, recognition of Jesus's authority and commendation of great faith. And we have to have an active faith in this walk. So I encourage you as, as you go forward, I've, I've put some questions, um, 
in with this lesson in the notes uh, if you have an opportunity to go on the the website um, to help you go e dig even further with your class into this lesson this lesson is very comprehensive um, and we can't touch it all in this just this short amount of time but just remember that Jesus came for everybody that we have to approach him and recognize his authority but then even in our lives today we have to have a persistence in faith. Look, you prayed and it seemed that your prayers are not answered. Continuously pray. Continue to go before God, laying it at the altar, believing, knowing that he hears your prayer and believing that he will answer according to his will. And, and we have to know the word of God so that when we pray, we pray the word of God. Thank you for joining us on today's lesson. And I look forward, look forward to seeing a lesson every week posted on this SundaySchoolGirl.com channel. Thank you for joining us. Let us go out in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God, for your grace and and your mercy. We thank you for this word, oh God. Bless us that we will be persistent in prayer, oh God. Bless us, oh God, that we will remember to recognize your authority in the name of Jesus. Bless us, oh God that we shall have great faith according to your will, according to your word. Oh God, we thank you right now. We give you glory. We give you honor. Oh God, we give you, oh God, all the praise in Jesus' name. From this day forward, oh God, continue to bless us to walk in the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for joining us. And y'all be blessed. Thank you so much for sharing in this space with us today. If this ministry has blessed you in any way, I invite you to consider sharing a small gift of just $3 with us. You can do so by scanning one of the QR codes on the screen. And please don't forget... We are waiting for you to join us over in the TSSG Connect. You can see all the benefits here on the screen, and we look forward to serving you in a more personal way. Have you had an opportunity to visit our amazing swag shop? Stop by and check out great items for Sunday school and church school. T-shirts, pouches, mugs, and so much more. Find something that you'll enjoy or something for your favorite teacher. Hey! Changing the way you see Sunday school with that sun.